Praise the Lord, everyone. It's so good to be here this morning. Why don't you stand with me? Amen. We've been looking forward to this day. As the Bible says, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Surely the Lord is in this place today, and I'm glad that you're here. If you have not, why don't you go ahead anyway and turn to somebody near you and say, I'm so glad you're here this morning. Would you do that? Amen. Amen. And ask somebody else, are you ready for church? Praise God. Is anybody ready to worship the Lord and to lift him up? We're believing that God's going to just show up in this place and we're going to trust the Lord to touch your life before you leave. Let's pray together and invite God's blessing. Father, we come to you. We're grateful, God, for your kindness and mercy. We're just grateful, God, for what you have already done in our hearts and lives, uh, what we have felt already in this place. But Lord, the word that has come forth uh, through our lesson this morning, and now, God, we're coming to worship you and to hear the preaching and all that's going to take place. We're just praying that you would let your presence, Lord, uh, permeate this atmosphere in a special way that we will leave differently than we have arrived and we're giving you praise in Jesus name would you clap your hands to the Lord let's welcome his presence into this house God bless you amen lift up Jesus continue just to stand and let's worship the Lord and sing.
Yeah.
Hallelujah. 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 Has he done anything good for you? I said, has he done anything good for you? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to pray this morning. We're trusting God to help us in our needs. And we have some prayer requests that were turned in. We want to pray for Sister Debbie Culp. Uh, just uh, uh, needs the Lord to take over the life of her family and friends and a lot of needs there. And we want to ask God to help in these matters. Amen. Uh, Alan and Susan Embry both need healing. And also Lindsay's baby for healing sister, Lily Embry, has sent this. And then we want to pray, continue to pray for uh, Sister Donna's, uh, is it uh, your great niece, uh, Sierra, that the Lord would help her. Amen. She is uh, going to be having surgery scheduled f uh, for March 21st. And uh, let's lift this to the Lord. It's a special need. And uh, God can. Amen. I said the Lord can. Hallelujah. God is able. God is able. Do you have a special need? You want to just lift your hand. You have a need this morning or you know of a need you're going to bring to the Lord. And as we pray, if anybody has a special need that you want us to agree together with you or to pray for you, is there any sick among you? Let them come. Amen. We'll pray for you this morning, asking God to help you in whatever your need is. God is able this morning. Amen. Would you just lift these to the Lord this morning? If anybody has a need, step forward and we'll lay hands on you and pray for you. Father, we come to you this morning. We know, God, that all things are possible with you. There's nothing too great, God. Um, oh, Lord, that you are not able to help. Uh, Lord, we have had the witness of testimonies of healing, God, uh, that you have done. And amazing things, Lord, uh, that you continue to amaze your people. We're praying, God, that you would help in these special requests. We're praying, Lord, uh, this morning for C.R. Harris that you would touch her. God and be with her through her surgery time and we're praying also for Sister Debbie Culp's family that you would cover them Lord we're praying for salvation you know the needs in their lives the burden that Sister Debbie carries for them we're praying for Sister Lily's family Alan and Susan both need healing we're praying for Lindsay's baby for healing Lord in all things God we put in your hands knowing that you're able to help us and, and whatever they are God we're trusting you that you would touch those who need a touch today. And we ask in Jesus' name. I wonder if you'd just lift your hands to the Lord and by faith, let's thank him for answering prayer. Would you do that? Father, we're thanking you by faith that whatever these needs are, you would minister, Lord, and bring healing. We're thanking you, God, uh, for doing that. And by faith, Lord, we thank you for answering prayer. We ask and believe in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to let you be seated. God bless you. going to ask our ushers to come forward, and we're going to receive your Sunday morning tithing and offering. Amen. This is a special day. Uh, we have with us today uh, brother and sister Norman. We're so excited that they're going to be ministering to us this morning and in this evening service also. And uh, also we're going to be having a special uh, baptisms here in just a little bit. And we're just glad for that. We always love to celebrate with our children and uh, we're trusting God to bless them. And uh, so this morning we're going to uh, we're going to uh, share this affirmation. Would you just say this with me? This is just an affirmation that we believe what God said he would do. And uh, God has done so much for so many. But let's say it with our mouth this morning. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and shall be given to me. Pressed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Would you just lift your tithe and offering to the Lord and let's pray God's blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, we're just trusting you this morning, God, that you would just take and use this to your glory. We're giving you praise for you're a mighty God, and we ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you stand? Amen. God bless you. Bring your offering and tithe forward this morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen to God. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to, uh, this morning, when we are preparing for baptism, save some room right here just a moment. Let me get the family in here. That's all right. Uh, I want them to have front row if they can. And uh, any of the family of those being baptized, if you would, just we tried to make some room here for you and uh, let them through here. Uh, bless you. That's all right. Thank you. The, uh, Brother Noah, thank you. <laughs> they didn't understand. I want to make sure that the family can step up close. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. We brought the children in too. They wanted to celebrate with other children they've been attending class with, and they're just excited about getting to do so. Uh, bless you. Come on, hon. What is your first name? I'm sorry. Adeline. How old are you? Okay. All right. Praise God. Excited about this because these children have been wanting to get baptized for weeks. And we've been making arrangements for it. And they found out that their family could come here today. And doesn't this look good? Would you clap your hands and welcome the family? There's room right up here. If you want to step right up here, that's all right. Step right up in front so you can see. Because I realize that this sets high and they're going to go down low. Amen. <laughs> But uh, Adeline is nine years old, and she wants to get baptized, and, and uh, uh, it's exciting to know that. Amen. I understand that one of the children was talking to a parent, and they said something uh, in question about uh, how to be saved, and the child just began to tell it. Our, our Sunday school does a good job. Our teachers do a great job just instructing the children. And when a child understands like that, you don't hold back. Amen. Let them. Jesus said this. He said, suffer the little children. That's a word that means permit the children to come unto me. And we're permitting them this morning. Would you stretch your hand out this way? We're going to pray over Adeline. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for Adeline this morning as she obeys you in water baptism for the remission of her sins in Jesus' name. I just pray that you would just bless in a special way as she rises to walk in newness of life. Fill her glorious, Lord, with your spirit and bless her family, God. As they celebrate with her, we ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. For the remission of your sins in Jesus' name. Now we're going to baptize Greta. Greta is eight years old. I was baptized when I was eight years old, and I'm telling you, it's good. Amen. What she's doing this morning will change her life, and I'm excited to do that. Once again, stretch your hand this way as we pray over Greta. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we just pray over Greta that your hand would be upon her. You're such a good God. You touch the hearts of children. You change lives, Lord. And I thank you for what you're doing through Greta. And to Greta, Lord, bless her in a special way as she rises to walk in newness of life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I 
according to the confession of your faith. I now baptize you into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you as you return to your seats, and we're going to continue worship in just a moment more. God bless you.
your hands to the Lord again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a great God. I said, what a great God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We rejoice in the Lord for what the Lord has done. Amen, amen, amen. So glad. You may be seated if you want. God bless you. Praise God. I just want to uh, I, I rejoice every time we get to baptize anyone. But there's something about children that's just special to me. And uh, to reach a child in it, their young life. To think that it keeps them from so much in their adult life because you start them on the right path, on the right trajectory. God is good. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, Brother Sonny, we, we have some certificates for them and we'll get them to them after church before they leave, if you would, please. Amen, Sister. Uh, Alicia already has them printed, I think, and so they're ready. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. I've been looking forward to this morning. Such a great day to rejoice in the Lord. And uh, we have several guests with us today. I don't have all your names, but I want you to know we're just grateful that you are here. Amen. So glad for each one that has come. We have several come to celebrate the baptism. Thank you so much for doing so. Amen. It means so much to the children, but it means so much to us also. And uh, we're just glad for what the Lord is doing in their life. Amen. Amen. Um, and and uh, with Kimmy this morning is Jane Lee. And I just met her. I talked to her several times on the phone when Kimmy was so sick in the hospital, thought we was about to lose her, but God had other business to do, amen, and touched her, and she's doing so well today, and Jane came, and I met you for the first time this morning personally, thank you for being with us, Jane, it's good to have you, God bless you for being here, amen, 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 oh, what a great God. Brother and Sister Norman are not strangers to our church. Brother Norman has come for many years now and ministered to us, and we have been blessed abundantly. And there are several in our church that have received the Holy Ghost, amen, under his ministry here. And there are some who have been healed of sickness in, under his ministry here. And God has done great things. And over the years, there's been an addition to the family, and that is Sister Norman. And now we have uh, Glenn sitting on the platform, I see. And he's got a microphone, so I'm not sure what's going to happen here in just a little bit. But uh, we're just glad to have them with us this morning. And we've come to worship the Lord and to lift him up. But get behind the preacher. Praise God. Is anybody ready for the preaching of the word? Amen. We had him scheduled, I think, in January, and they weren't back from overseas yet, but uh, made it back. And we're glad to have them, and we're excited about what God's going to do today, this morning, and tonight. Um, would you put your hands together, give a warm Palmara welcome to Brother and Sister Norman. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Uh, what a joy to be with each of you today in the house of the Lord. I think all of us can, certainly we should, be able to say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. One of the most popular songs in the world today, especially popular in Africa, but not only Africa, you'll hear it in Europe and other places. It says that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. When you don't know it, when you don't realize it, when you've somehow not shaken your brain enough to understand it, God is good. Amen. 
I'll never forget being in my mid-20s, living in southeast Missouri. I was born in St. Louis area. I live there now, but I was mainly raised in southeast Missouri, and I was stepping into a grocery store in Donovan, Missouri, and uh, not far above the, the just the border of Arkansas. It's about 10 miles north of it, and if you're not familiar with southeast Missouri, and, and there I was, and I was going to the grocery store, and I was having a bad day. I'm, I'm generally generally a pretty happy person, pretty, I don't want to say happy-go-lucky, but happy-blessed, amen, and generally a happy person and and uh, I, I was kind of grouchy and just kind of sour it's kind of off the off the normal beat of my life but I was grouchy and as I as I stepped into the store the grocery store I saw a, a young man similar age to me and and uh, he had uh, something that had happened in his life and it had caused his leg to be twisted from the knee down and so he was he was dragging that leg and of course he had blessings in his life as well and the Lord in his way, gently rebuked me there in that grocery store. And he brought it to my mind how all my life I had not thought about taking a step. All my life I had not thought about really running or walking or anything. And here I was, and here that young man was, and and he wasn't complaining, and here I had a grouchy attitude. And right there in that store, tears began to stream down my face, and I began to cry as I began to think about the goodness of God. I say that to say this to you, all of us should and could and I I would that we would say the Lord is good the Lord is good amen the Jamaicans they have a saying they like to sing an old song they like to sing it has a saying that says the Lord blocked it amen and I was sharing it with somebody and they asked me one time what does that mean I said well (laughs) that red light was an extra 30 seconds and you got mad but you didn't know it if you'd have been on time you would have been in the car wreck but but God blocked it you were not feeling good and you were going to go to the doctor and he was going to diagnose you with cancer but in that service the presence of the Lord come upon you and when you went to the doctor there suddenly was nothing there you never knew you had it but God did and he took care of it in advance God God blocked it. Amen. The Lord is good. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you look better in church. Amen. We honor uh, Pastor and Sister Axton, and we love and appreciate them, their friendship. Amen. And their godly example to all of us. They love God, and they don't play about this. This is their life. Amen. Some people play church. And play preacher, amen. And I understand the roller coaster of human emotion, but they're serious about this, and we have much honor and respect for them for that. Um, I do want to also say the church has, for some time, helped me in my travels. Before, when I was single, and now that I'm married. And uh, I want you to know that we practice what we preach. We help other people, too. I just got a message right before service started, and it's from a Filipino pastor who lives in Athens, Greece. And the largest island in Greece is Crete. It's large enough to be its own country. Greece, many of you know, has thousands of islands. And so he lives in Athens. Him and his wife went to Athens, went to Greece so that they could uh, have a better livelihood. Brother Jeff, they send money back to the Philippines to help their family be able to feed, feed, you know, eat, even though they've been in Greece for probably two decades. But every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, Brother Ricky... He gets on a plane and flies one hour, lands at the airport, jumps in a taxi, drives to the center of the biggest city in Crete, and he opens a church because there's some Filipinos there in Crete, and he wants them to have church. And so he's got about 25 people. And so the Lord laid it on my heart to buy a couple tickets for him because his his funds had driven dried up. He couldn't he couldn't fly. He's he's not making much money. And he sent me a deal this morning, Pastor Axton. He said, I want to want you to know thank you. The church in Crete is rejoicing because I can come this Sunday and I can preach to them this Sunday. The Lord is good. Can you say amen? The Lord is good. Before I preach to you, I'd like my wife, amen. And she is quite the lady. For those of you that don't know, she's a a great preacher. She's from Venezuela, and uh, she preaches at me all the time. You know, I'm getting wiser, Brother Wettel Jeff. I've learned that when your wife's six months pregnant, you just say, yes, ma'am, hallelujah. (laughs) I have a wonderful wife, and I'd like her to come. 
Brother, uh, my, my son, Glenn Abraham, is keeping an eye on Pastor Axton, so you don't have to worry. He's in good hands. <laughs> Amen. But I'd like her to come and greet you. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you this morning. It's been a while. Last time, we were three. Now we are four. You don't see it, but it's there, okay? <laughs> so many of you know that God gave me a word when it was almost impossible for me to get pregnant. Um, I asked God, I say, do you going to give me children? And the Lord say, yes. He say, three. So after Glenn, I knew I know it is coming. I didn't know when, but I, I knew it was coming, you know, soon. And in the summer, we went to uh, Greece. And one time we were eating with a pastor in a restaurant, and he looked at me and he said, you're going to be praying that real soon. And I say, is that a prophecy? And he said, I'm just telling you, you're going to be praying that real soon. And I was like, okay. So I got excited because I got, I started getting baby fever again, I guess. <laughs> you know, the newborn stage. <laughs> and I say, okay. So two months after, I told my husband, I said, I think this is a false prophet. Because he told me very soon, and well, we, we, I was just joking, you know. So the next month, I got pregnant, so I, I, I called him and I say, you have to provide all the diapers, okay, because I'm pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> so he was nervous, say, okay. <laughs> but the Lord is so good, amen. And another thing that the Lord showed me was a, a dream where I saw two little boys running on a... Um, grass, you know, like a jar, and another girl behind, very small, and, and I told my husband, I said, we're going to have two boys first, and then a girl, a girl, and so I told my husband, I said, God didn't give me the opportunity to even do a gender reveal, because we knew at first, I said, it's a boy, and so we went to do the, the photo, of the, that thing, and, and we were like, yes, it's a boy, doctor, and she was like, yeah, boy. So God already told us. So God is so good, amen? And whatever he promised to us, he will fulfill. He will, you know, even when, like the angel showed up to Mary and he said, you will give a child. And she said, how this can happen, you know? And, and then she said, whatever the Lord wants to do, because for God, nothing is impossible, say the angel. So we need to approach God thinking for God, nothing is impossible. No matter how big it, it, sound, it sounds in our mind or we think, oh, how can this happen? Or how it will happen? For God, nothing is impossible. Amen? Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Would you stand with me today? We're going to get into the word of the Lord. And we're going to be reading from John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus is talking to his disciples, who he is soon to depart from, not in hours, but just days, weeks. And he's told them about things that are going to come, things that will happen. And he says these words in John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. With the help of the Lord, I want to preach to you on the subject of never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. God bless you. You may be seated. Each of us goes through trials and tribulations. Life is not always easy, and it's not always going to go the way we want it to go. But the reality is that God is constant. God is steady. God is able to do even exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. What are you saying to me, preacher? I want you to know that no matter what you're facing or what you're going through or what circumstances may surround you, that God never loses a battle. 
My God has never stepped into a situation and felt overwhelmed, under-equipped, or unable to help you. Amen. In fact, Jesus made it clear in Matthew 28 and 18, all, not some, not one-third, not one-fourth, but all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So much so that we can say, as Paul the Apostle said in Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? Because when the Lord is on our side, we have a majority. You may see the dark clouds of trouble surrounding you. Tribulation may have flooded your life, but I want you to know God can still step in and stay peace. Be still to the storm and the winds obey and the waters retreat and everything will be okay. Why do you say it? Because God never loses a battle. Amen. He's a winner all the time. Even when you think he's lost, he wins. For the Bible says, if the prince of this world Lucifer the devil that's who that is if the prince of this world had known he would not have crucified the Lord of glory even when they thought he lost he won even thought that we, even when they thought they had him defeated he won what are you saying preacher I'm saying hold up your head look unto the hills for your help is coming from the Lord he never loses a battle you may feel like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and surrounded by a fire that's so, fir that's so fiery that even those that are stoked in the furnace have been burned up by it. But don't you worry. There'll be a theophany. There'll be what the Bible calls a fourth man in the fire that will make you be able to survive it. You may be like Daniel in a lion's den and you're on the dinner menu, but don't you worry. The angel of the Lord will appear. God never loses a battle. Without exception, without exception, God has all power and he has all ability. We often in our finite, our limited human brains, we, we try to make God here on the right side and the devil here on the left side. And we try to, in our thinking, amen, even a believer's thinking, we try to make the devil the opposite of God, but it's not true. God has all power and the devil has no power. Now, we don't deny there's a devil. There is a devil. The Bible declares it. And the Bible also declares that we're not ignorant of his devices. We need to recognize he's trying to steal our soul. He's like a roaring lion, the Bible says, roaming to and fro seeking whom that denotes permission he may devour but we also understand something we understand that no matter the situation or the circumstance God has all of the power we understand that every battle that God engages in he wins he wins he wins he wins again and again and again God he never loses a battle Paul put it this way, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is the law. But 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, Oh, but thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hands and worship the Lord right now? Praise God. Praise God. Brother Norman's going to step out just a moment, but I want you to lift your hands one more time. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God's not through in this service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceeding abundantly uh, above all that we ask or think. Uh, hallelujah. There is no God that is greater than our God. Uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's preaching about God has never lost a battle. I want you to know God has never lost a battle. Amen, amen. There's nothing too great for our God. If you ever understand, has, how many's ever been in a battle? Has anybody been in a battle recently? Amen. I want you to know that's what God does is he steps in when we need him the 
most, and he is there. And sometimes we've looked to various elements of the world, and we've looked to various elements of things around us, wondering, where is God? But I want you to know he was there all the time. He was not far away from any of us. Amen. He was not far away from any of us. My mind goes to the scripture that talks about when Jesus was walking on the water that night, uh, and the disciples were upset. Uh, there was a storm, the winds and the waves, uh, and uh, th they looked and they saw uh, uh, they saw a, a spirit. Uh, it was Jesus. They thought it was a ghost or something, uh, but it was Jesus. Uh, and when they looked up, they cried out, uh, and Jesus said uh, uh, for them to fear not because it was him. He identified himself. I want you to know when the Lord identifies himself, uh, he is closer than you realize. Uh, he is closer right near us at any time, at all times. Uh, how many knows that to be true? Has God been close to you and you didn't realize uh, where he was and what was going on? Uh, amen. But God was right near us at all times. Uh, amen. Uh, I remember times I, I was uh, I was raised in the church, and my parents uh, were people that faced uh, cri trials and crises. And and uh, when they did, uh, uh, I looked back now as a as a uh, an adult, and I I didn't know what they was going through, but but they were going through some severe crises. Uh, amen. But they were people that said, "I'm going to keep on faithful to God. Uh, I'm going to hold His hand through the storm, uh, through the battle, through the trial. Uh, God is able to help." us. Uh, I want us to lift our hand to him one more time because we know uh, that God can do anything. Uh, hallelujah. God is our strength and our help in time of need. Uh, amen. And if you have a need today, God's here to help us. Uh, praise God because his strength uh, is mightier than anything I've ever had in my life. Uh, beyond him. Uh, amen. Uh, he is there at all times. Uh, Praise God. I know just this week um, we were just, uh, you know, life can just go from one thing to another. And, and uh, I, I remember uh, uh, a few days I just was just so drained and so extremely tired. I tell my wife, I say, I am so exhausted. And she said, well, rest. And I would try to rest. Amen. Uh, I would do that. But I'm going to tell you what, all week it seemed like I battled that. Uh, every day it seemed like, well, maybe this is the day. No, I, I'm just uh, I'm battling that. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what, yesterday morning uh, I come to church early, and it was just, uh, I think, the three of us, Brother Sonny and Brother Eric and myself, and, and we met at 630 for prayer. But the Spirit Spirit of God moved in, and I felt strength come in. Uh, amen. I feel refreshed. Uh, I feel renewed. Uh, I want you to know God can. Uh, hallelujah. You're in a place where the presence of God can touch you uh, and help you when you come into a place. How many was in Sunday school this morning and saw the adult class, uh, a video that was played? Uh, amen. Uh, uh, it was about a man that, that was blind. Let me just share it for those who weren't here. Um, this man was blind. He talked about how that it started with MS, and, and it talked about how that it began to affect his vision, but he also worked in an environment um, where there was a chemical um, that was very hard on his sight, uh, and the combination of both began to attack his sight, uh, but God... Uh, touched him and turned it around. Uh, amen. Uh, but uh, what it amounted to, how it happened was this. Uh, in his blind condition, he was totally blind in one eye, and he was just uh, uh, a, a percentage of a, a fractured vision um, on his other eye. So he was legally blind. Uh, he could not see. He couldn't, uh, uh, he couldn't function as a normal person. Um, but somebody witnessed to him about uh, uh, salvation, about repenting, uh, and he says, I knew I needed to get baptized in Jesus' name. And the video was there as he talked about it. Uh, and he got baptized in Jesus' name. And when he come up, he's just praising God uh, for what the Lord did. And all of a sudden, you saw it on his face uh, when all of a sudden uh, he, he's looking like this. And he turned to the pastor and began to speak to him um, and tell, uh, there's something's happened to me. Uh, and you could tell what he, and so he's explaining this in a separate frame uh, about what the Lord 
Lord had just done for him, he says, uh, all of a sudden I could make out the lights. Uh, and he says, and as I begin to think, well, maybe this is just, uh, uh, you know, something's, uh, I'm not recognizing, uh, it's not really happening to me. Let me just get my composure a moment. He says, but then I could look beyond the people and at the back of the church were flags. Uh, he said, not only could I make out the flags, uh, they were on pose. Uh, I could tell what each country was by looking at them. Uh, God had restored his vision. Uh, amen. Uh, when he went down in water in Jesus' name, he came up out of there and God had healed him. No, that doesn't happen every time, but it happened then. Uh, and that's what God can do. Praise God. Uh, God is able. Uh, hallelujah. We're tag preaching this morning. Praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. You forgive me, I apologize. Never, never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. What do you say to me, preacher? I'm saying no matter what you're facing, God is able to take care of you. I'm not somebody that stands in front of you, no disrespect to those that are teenagers, 14 with pimples and never had a problem. I know what it is to have a problem. I, I know what it is to be overwhelmed by the odds that are stacked against you, but I know what it is to see God show up. I know what it is to say the Lord hath helped me. The Lord hath delivered me. The Lord hath taken care of me. I come to you today wanting you to know and recognize that tribulation and trouble may come in a variety of forms. All of us have felt our problems. Life is short. The book of Psalms says life is but like a vapor. But during that vapor-like life, that 80 years or so that we live, amen, that four score, as the old English used to say, amen, there's going to be troubles. Trials and tragedies, amen. Paul talks about it in the book of Corinth earlier before this. He talks about being shipwrecked, uh, about being beaten, uh, about strikes on his back, uh, being disowned, uh, amen. And the list goes on. But then he talks about the goodness of God. Uh, then he talks about how the Lord took care of him. Uh, what are you saying to me? You need to remember God never loses a battle. Brother Norman, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. My life is in chaos. God doesn't lose a battle. Call on his help. Call on his help. No wonder in the mix of the birth of the New Testament church this took place in Acts chapter 2. There's a key element that often sometimes we overlook. It's a cry of hunger. Jesus had taught the new Torah in Matthew chapter 5 and he said these words, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be field. Amen. And so here, the New Testament church is about to birth. Amen. Don't worry about my boy. He's just a little prophet to be. Amen. He's excited, but he's got a few more years left. Amen. For he's ready. Amen. But I'm glad he loves church. Aren't you? Amen. I'm glad. We put that suit on him on Sunday morning. He won't take it off. Under, I got to make him take it off Sunday night. Amen. Just so he can go to bed. His mama can't even get it off of him. I've got to have a little nice talk with him. Amen. I'm glad he likes church. Amen. I'm glad he wants to be in the church and he likes his little suit. That's okay. You look sharp, son. Amen. But but the birthday of the church in Acts chapter 2, amen, something happens. Amen. The new Torah, amen. Jesus, instead of saying thou shalt not, now says thou shalt. Amen. And it was in Matthew 5, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Amen. And then in Acts 2, we see the birthday of the New Testament church. A lot of people get confused. They read Matthew 1 and they say we're in the, the New Testament church age. No, no, we're about to be in the New Testament church age. The four great evangelists as they're known, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell us about the birth, the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. They're known as the four great evangelists. Amen. But the New Testament church age couldn't begin until the death of the testator the book of Hebrews says and that testator is Jesus Christ the one that was without sin the one that died in your place and my place for our sins he died on an old rugged cross but he didn't stay dead he buried those sins and he rose to live again can you say amen and on the 
birthday of the New Testament church. Uh, amen. The, the honoring uh, the feast of the first fruits, the first Christians. Uh, amen. The first believers. Uh, the feast of the first fruits, uh, also known as Pente. Pentecost. Pente means 50. 50 days after Passover begins, it ends with the beginning of the feast of the first fruits. And so there they are, and Peter is preaching the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he uses this terminology. He said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They asked him later on, Acts 2 and 37, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? And he answers them, Acts 2 and 38, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 38, now verse 39, for the promise is unto you. That's the plan of salvation, but let us never forget, it's got to begin with somebody calling on the Lord. It begins with somebody saying, I need the Lord to help me. It begins with somebody recognizing God I need you to step into my situation and that's not only the beginning of our salvation but that is also the beginning of our help in every trouble in every trial in every tragedy it doesn't end there but it does begin there somebody you need to hear me today don't forget where you came from God will help you and he never loses a battle he never loses a battle. I remember being on that metro station, New York City. I, for some years, I would preach every year in Staten Island. My good friend, Brother Robert Carter, our district secretary for probably 30 years. And uh, I'd flown in early, and me and his son, his son's now the pastor. His son, he, he uh, took me to see a Broadway show, Lion King. I'd never seen a Broadway show. So we got that ferry from Staten Island into Manhattan, and then you jump on the metro and you get dropped off. And we're on the metro, and I didn't know and didn't particularly care. But there's an unwritten rule. You don't talk to anybody on the subway train, on the metro. All the New Yorkers know this unwritten rule. It's a no-go. You don't talk to anybody on the train, on the metro. They tolerate foreigners. By foreigners, they don't mean people from Bangladesh or India. They mean other Americans, a man who don't know better. And so we're sitting on the metro, and there's a lady near me. And I started inviting her. And I, I didn't count them, but I would guesstimate and maybe as many as 50 other people on that car, that train car, Brother Jeff. And I started inviting her to church. And she looks at me, and she says, you're the fifth person that's invited me to a, a church this week. I don't know what's going on. And I looked at her and it was like the whole world froze silent. Everything froze still, you understand. And I looked at her and I did what you should never do. And I don't advise you to do, but I did it. I leaned forward with my big finger, Brother Steve. And I put it right there. And I patted her on the forehead. I said, dummy. God is talking to you. Not exactly the words I would teach people to say. Not exactly the thing I would say you should do. But I did it. When I did it, stream, tears streamed down her face. The whole quiet car went from quiet to super quiet as jaws dropped. The pastor's son was now nervous and didn't know what to do. Because he really didn't want to be associated with me anymore. <laughs> he walked dumbfounded as we got off the last stop of the metro. Onto the ferry. And then he looked at me and he said, you, 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 you. He wasn't a man to get tongue tied. You, 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 you can't do that. I said, what's that? You can't talk to people on the metro station. Especially like that. I said, I did. He said, didn't say much else to him. I knew it was not something he would understand. We got to his house. He was in his 30s. Married now, got several kids, but he wasn't in. Got to his house. He told his dad, I, I went into the living room. We were going to visit and went back in the kitchen. He told his daddy, I could hear him talking. He said, dad, 
He did what you're not supposed to do. He talked to somebody on the metro and he touched them. And then he got quiet. And he said, but I felt God. And I don't know what's going on. And I stepped into the kitchen. And I said, I'll tell you what's going on. On a busy Friday night, well, forgive me, it was a Saturday night. On a busy Saturday night, God dropped in a subway station car in the heart of Manhattan and let 50 people, approximately 50 people know, I know who you are. I know where you're at. Whew. If you'll just call on me. <laughs> if you'll just call. Somebody hear me today. God knows where you're at and what you're going through. And if you'll call on him, he never loses a battle. I had a wise man tell me. I had a wise man tell me. I was standing not far from him. He told me, he said, I know you love God. And I know you love your wife. But you've never felt love like you'll feel when you hold that little boy in your hands. It was a little different for me than it was you, Brother Jeff. When I first held him, to be honest, all I could think about was bills and responsibility and taking care of these two. By them, too, I mean my wife and him. That was an expression of love. Different people love different ways. But after a few days calmed down, and I figured out how that would all happen, just overwhelming love continued to grow. I can say this. I'm in Missouri. I don't think you're going to be offended. If you are, please pray about it. But I love that boy. I love that boy. Somebody try to hurt my boy, I'd hurt you. I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't give it any second thought, and I doubt I would ever consider repenting about it. I just hurt him. Amen. That's my boy. You all getting quiet right now. That's my boy. I love that boy. I mean, I'd hurt you. I mean, I'd, I'd hurt you bad. That's my boy. He ain't perfect. I ain't going to be no apologies. Anybody from Missouri in here? You're from the Illinois side. Forgive me. You're on the Missouri side. We talk like this sometimes. <laughs> Smile a little bit. That's my boy. That's my flesh and blood. God gave me responsibility for him. I love that boy. The whole world can be in chaos, but he come and give me a hug. Oh, everything's okay. And Sister Debbie, when he comes to me, he knows who his daddy is. He'll come to me. He don't ask. He don't debate. There's a steel-eyed determination that just knows it's the way it's so. He'll walk up to me. He'll walk up to me, and he'll just go. And he knows it's time for daddy to pick me up. If I'm that way with my son. If I'm that way with my son, how do you think God, our Heavenly Father, is with his children? You think you're in a battle by yourself? You think nobody's going to help you? I want to suggest to you, sir and ma'am, brother and sister, God never loses a battle. And if I'm willing to fight to the death to protect my flesh and blood, what do you think God is willing to do for you? He never loses a battle. I grew up with a daddy like that. My daddy was a Marine. He wasn't as big as me, about 5'5", five, five, 150 pounds. He was an expert riflesman. Ended up not being the sniper, but the sniper's assistant in Korea. And he was just a country boy. I said, but how do you get that top mark in the, in the Marines for shooting? He said, oh, I was a country boy. He said, to put us in the military, they gave us a gun. They showed us how to cock it. We already knew how to shoot it. He said they had to change, no, no offense to anybody, he said they had to train the boys from the city, but we all grew up hunting. I'd been hunting coons since I was five years old, ten years old by myself. It was just another gun. It was easy, point and shoot. But I didn't have to learn how to cock it, and they showed me that. And he said, my daddy, I grew up with him. He wasn't a big man, wasn't overbearing, even though he'd been a Marine. But, but I, I, I grew up with this knowledge. He never stated it. I grew up always knowing, Brother Elijah, that my daddy... If he had to give his life to protect me, he would. 
there was a security there. There was, I knew he loved me. I knew he cared for me. That, that, that if there was an oncoming car and he had to take his life to get me out of the way, it was going to happen. My daddy loving me was never a question, amen. And that's why it's so strong in me to be that way towards my son. But you need to hear it today. That's how God loves you. That's how he loves you. And he never loses a battle. Would you close your eyes and lift your hands and worship the Lord and allow God to love on you right now? Somebody allow our Heavenly Father to, to wrap his loving arms around you right now. Somebody allow our great and glorious God, amen, to, to, to just wrap his arms around you now and whisper his love in your ear in your life. Let him love on you right now, our King, our Jesus, our God. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes we feebly try to take care of things on our own when the reality is, God's trying to take care of it for us. We're like Moses. We've done what we can do. We're at the edge of the Red Sea. But guess what? God's saying, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But my wife didn't tell you as the doctor told her she couldn't have children. He said, I'll give you a year to try, and then we're going to have to assist you. And my wife told us that that's all right. God wants us to have children. We're going to have children. Come back a year later, and she was pregnant. She did it. Maybe she shouldn't have, but she told the doctor, told you so. <laughs> After the first baby, a few months later, pregnant again in June. I'm sure she told you, amen, our second boy coming in June, amen, come back. Looked at the doctor, not mean, you know, if you know my wife, she's Latino, fiery, amen, lovely lady, wonderful woman, not mean, but smile in her face, little glitter in her eye. She said, I'm pregnant again, doc. Didn't need your help this time either. She didn't say it, but I knew that's what she was thinking, amen. No matter your situation, God is able to help. With eyes closed, let me ask, how many of you know you have some situations you need the Lord to help you with. Would you raise your hand? Would you be honest enough with yourself to just be honest before the Lord? Nobody looking but the Lord and me. Raise your hand if you know you need the Lord to help you with some things. Amen. A lot of hands coming up. A lot of people humbling themselves. Thank you. Would you stand with me today? Stand with me. Thank you. Thank you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Nobody looking but the Lord. Nobody looking but the Lord and me. And my lips are sealed. Heads bowed, eyes closed, please, out of respect for the moment. The Bible says in the book of Romans, written to believers, if any, it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's written to believers. It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, 9, and 10, you can read it all. But the heart of it is this, and I quote King James Version, If any man say he sinned not, again written to believers. If any man say he sinned not, he deceives his own self, and the truth is not in him. If you're here today and you would be honest before the Lord and say, I need the Lord to... Help me with some things I'm dealing with. I need some forgiveness. I need some help in situations. Maybe it's not a sin situation. Maybe it's just overwhelming life. Whatever it may be, would you raise your hand? Our God shall call. There's no limitation on that. God's promise to baptize every single believer with the Holy Ghost. Just like in Acts 2 and 4. And they were all, not some, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. All of them began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Yes, the apostles, but also 107 other disciples and even Mary. All filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues like in the Bible. If you're here today, you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Never been filled with the Holy Ghost with the Bible sign of speaking in other tongues. Would you raise your hand right now quickly? Nobody looking but me. We've seen thousands receive it. Be honest before the Lord. He'll give it to you the Bible way. Thank you. We trust for your honesty. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Now listen to me carefully. The Lord's going to move in here again in a mighty way. 
and he's going to touch and he's going to bless. I'm not in the begging business. I'm in the blessing business. If you're here and you want God to step into your situation and to step into your circumstance and to show himself, as the Bible calls him, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, then as a sign of your faith, I'm asking you in the whole church, would you step away from where you're standing and would you come to the front and stand real quickly? Come now. Come now. Don't wait for somebody else. Come, come. We'll give you further instruction when you get here. Just don't block the, the, the aisle, please. Come. Come, come. Everybody's welcome. Come. 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 Come, come, come. No strangers at the altar. Amen. Everybody's welcome. Come, come. Come, come. In the name of the Lord. Now, the first thing we're going to do, I do it every day. Brother Eric, I do it before every service. If people wonder what I'm doing in that office, I'm just making sure one last time my heart's right before God before I come out to preach. Every day I repent. Amen. And if there's any way I, I'm being a little lighthearted, but honest, if there's any way I forget, my wife reminds me. Amen. Every day I repent. Amen. Make sure my heart's right before God. Just a moment, I'm going to call everybody, amen, to repent. If you have too much pride to repent, just means you need to. It's not complicated. Just real pretty simple. I've preached for bishops that oversee thousands of churches. I've seen them put their face right in the dirt when we make a call of repentance because they humble themselves before the one true God because there's only one king in this kingdom and his name is Jesus. Just a moment, I'll call to repent. I can't say it for you, pray it for you, mean it for you. But to repent is just to humble yourself before God and sincerely ask Him to forgive you, knowing Jesus died in your place for your sins, but not just knowing, believing so much so you ask Him to. Right now, under everybody under the sound of my voice, I'm asking you, would you close your eyes? Let us close our eyes. Let us open our mouths uh, and let us repent in the presence of the Lord. Let us ask God for his forgiveness and get our hearts ready to receive from him. Father, forgive me. You think of my heart and my mind and my spirit. But be not right, God, forgive me. And the thing that be not right in the sight of the Lord, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. Cover me. I plead the blood of Jesus said it Calvary on my soul. Let it be in the name of Jesus, Lord. Cover me, cover me, Father, cover me. Cover my soul, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit, O God. Sando lobo le beki da bando de hete. Ke melende bola ma sando da ma sando de he. Ke melende bola bola ma sando da la ma hodo. Ke monda na mana mo kone mone mo ine ne 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 he. Kano sando na ine ne he. Kando soto. Father, let it be in the name of Jesus. Now, if you've asked the Lord to forgive you and it's still not late, would you lift up your hands and let the Lord bless you? Would we, could we lift up our hands and open our mouths and begin to give our great God our praise and our worship? Would we let God step into our situation? He's a healer. He's a provider. He's a protector. Most of all, he's a savior. Somebody give him praise right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray that every sickness would be gone in the name of Jesus. We pray that every empty spot would be filled with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That depression would flee. In the, come on, somebody, just worship him with me for a little bit right now. He never loses a battle. <laughs> Some all over the house of the Lord. We're going to take just a few minutes right now, but would you close your eyes and open your mouth? And the Bible said, let everything that hath breath, would you praise the Lord? Let everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord.
Would you lift up your hands with me and worship the Lord? Just a few more moments. It's not just about what the Lord does for you, but what he does for others around you. Uh, come on, church. Uh, I need you to help continue, continue to create a presence uh, that the Lord dwells in. For the Bible says the Lord dwells in the praises of his people.
We're providing an opportunity through praise and worship what God is doing. Hallelujah. 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 He's a great God. Yes, he is. 